get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm really excited. We have Ken Glickman, who's a highly sought after marketing consultant and business coach. He's given over, I couldn't believe this when I read this, Ken, 1,200 presentations and trainings on marketing, stress management, time management to such companies, which we've heard of GE, Federal Express, Rubbermaid, and there's a long list of others. He's been on CNN, Fox, ABC with Barbara Walters, and many more, and he co-created iPower, Time Management Magic, Stress Busters, and several others. Ken, thanks for joining me. A pleasure to be here. I mean, I just want to correct one thing. I, I yeah. co-created the the seminar. Uh, the program was developed by Marty Edelston, who maybe we'll talk about. We will talk about. Founder yeah. and publisher of Borden Reports. Amazing man. Yes, and it's, um, since it's Inspired Insider about um, the lowest moment and how you push forward and then the proudest moment. Mm -hmm. So what's been one of the more lower moments uh, in business um, that you had to kind of push forward through. Yeah, I I took a left one place because I had a project that I really loved. I've been working on and it was doing well. And um, I soon realized that you know I thought I had the financial resources, and I really didn't. And then another opportunity came around that would give me that, and I had to make a decision. Mm. And because of family and stuff, that, that was tough to let go mm. of that one program. That was really a tough thing to do. I thought I had all the money I needed. Turned out I didn't. And, you know, that's one of the big problems with businesses is not having the finances. Yeah. How did you, you know, obviously it's a tough decision. How did you come to what was right? for you? Well, you know, that was a time that I now had something new to balance, which was my family. I mean, the opportunity that came on was a great one, which I really loved and yeah. led to great things. But, you know, um, it was, I, I, I think that part of it was dealing with my ego. Hmm. Um, that was a difficult, I'll tell you another difficult time was someone I'd worked with for 20 some years and leaving that situation because of some tension that was really tough that's another happened around the same time mm. and that was a real tough one yeah um and and that's something you know i remember a friend of mine who had a great partnership with he said you know partnerships never work they'll work for a while they'll never work right and this guy after 25 years they disintegrated in a very you know uh contesting yeah. uh, kind of split but that was tough. Those yeah. things were tough. Yeah, twenty-five years is a long time, though. Like, yeah, in a good yeah. way. You yeah, know. Well, they, they had a great run. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's. Uh, I ask because if someone's, hard. you know, that's going to do it, it's yeah. just. I ask because if someone's going through it now, you know, whatever that is, which is, you know, whether it's financial or business or partnership, uh, what advice do you have for them? Well, I mean, you know, if if you listen to anyone who's been successful, or most people, they will tell you that there were people that said it won't work, mm -hmm. and they pushed in and they did it. Mm -hmm. That's a tough call. Are you one of those people or not? You have to make a decision. Because for every one of those people, there are 10 that just, you know, push and push and pushed and, you know, uh, did not work. And, of course, a lot depends. If You know, the one thing, if you're young, go for it, you know. Um, it's harder when you're older and you have a lot of responsibilities. But part of it, you know, you got to believe in yourself. Uh, you got to really have something you believe in. You got to believe in yourself. And um, more than other people are going to believe in you sometimes. Yeah. I know when Marty started, Marty had a great job and he got that idea and he started out of his basement with his wife and his kids, his young yeah. kids. Then. Yeah. And no one thought it would work. So he had that belief in himself. He had that belief. But, but, 
But he got it tested. Yeah. As soon as he could, he got out there and he got something out in the market that was good and tested it. It just didn't stay in his head. Then as it get as you can, success knowledge. People that have actually done it. Hmm. Jim um oh, gives with a C, the guy that started um Career Track. When we decided to do a seminar, I got access to him and I was on the phone with him and he laid out a blueprint for me. This is how you do it. I mean he knew. <laughs> he had so many He's done it before. He said, Here, I'll take you through it. Yeah. I mean how much time and money did that save us? This was a guy who was super successful. He knew how to do it, yeah. and he told me how he did it. Didn't mean it was a perfect roadmap for us, but my God, yeah. <laughs> you know, success knowledge, yeah. success knowledge. You don't have to believe and take everything they say is true, but if they if they do not line up with you, you got to look. Well, how is mine different? Right. What am I doing yeah. different? You know. Anyway. That's why I love this in talking to you and then talking to the other founders I have on because we're learning from people who have actually done it. And yeah. um, it's really powerful. So on the flip side, Ken, what about one of the proudest moments business-wise for you? Oh, I mean, because my proudest moments are personal. Yeah. I mean, my proudest moments, my, I mean, by far are my um, wife and daughter and my doggies and my cat. I mean, yeah. I, it's just... I know okay. you're a family man, yes. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I had some um, law school, uh, being able to teach at the graduate college that was, was a thing. Uh, when I came out of law school, I didn't want to practice law, so I went and got involved with a, a, a business and I was making a lot of money. Being, so I, I uh, invented some stuff. You have a couple patents, I read. Yeah. And it's interesting, it was an exercise device. Really? I got the idea at night, I woke up, and then it was interesting pushing it through, you know, because I, I went and had a model made at a, uh, at a place, and I went, at that time, you didn't have the internet, so I located about 10, 15 companies I thought would be interested, and I sent out letters, and I visited, made presentations. Um, and uh, I forget the name of the company, AMC. It was a big sports company, but it, it, it didn't exist. It doesn't exist anymore. But it was one of the big ones then. And I remember I went to a meeting over in Jersey somewhere, some marketing guy. Yeah. And I had put the, the device, because it was real little, in this leather case. And um, and I had gone to the, uh, the phys ed department director at Conner College and had him run a test. And so he gave me a testimony. The product worked. And I had yeah. models do all the extra Anyway, so I go there, I put it there, and I'm telling him about this product. And I'm telling him about other products in the market that are similar and why they work and why those don't, I think. And then I wanted to show him the product. But I wanted him to sign something. I had my lawyer give me, you know, I don't want to show him something, they go and use it. And, of course, he didn't want to sign something. He had something for me to sign. Because he didn't want me to say I showed up at this thing and they're working on a product and now I, you know, if they're playing. So we're at this impasse. And luckily, there was a senior person from California that was at the meeting, and he was just sitting there watching. And I had this beauty, and he said, oh, the hell with it. I mean, he literally said that he took, put his name on it. So I showed him the product. <laughs> if you and, want to see what's in this leather bag, you will sign your name. Yeah, but I think I'd give him a good presentation. Yeah. And uh, they bought it, and I got a royalty. Not a lot of money, but I, it enabled me to live a couple years not worrying about money. Yeah. Um, and but the interesting it was called they named the Bruce Jenner PMJ3 product. So on the box it was Bruce, Bruce Jenner using it. <laughs> so you know, and Bruce Jenner has come back. If I, you know. Yes, <laughs> I still have a few of them around. Do you? All right. <laughs> but but I that was fun. It wasn't a big deal, but I, I needed the money, and it was a, it was yeah. cool to do that. Hey, just that, that's have, cool. yeah. You have a vision of something in your mind, and you just make it happen. Yeah. That was fun. I love that. Anything else you could think of? Proud moments? Well, I love the seminars. I love the speaking. And we affected a lot of people, and I had a great time doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, figuring out how to really move people, how to really bring about that internal change is important. Yeah. I've worked with some great clients. 
Yeah. Um, and really done some good work. And that's always rewarding. Yeah. You know, when you do consulting, you work very close to the money flow. I mean, some people work in this department, that department, that department. You're real close to the money coming. So you can make a big difference. Yeah. Um, you know, and then working with some executives and helping them see how to, you know, work with your people and be more productive. Yeah. yeah. And relax. <laughs> so, Ken, uh, this has been amazing. And I want, I have one last question for you. Sure. Uh, before I ask it, where should we point people towards? Where should they check out? I know um, KenGlickman.com. People can find that out the information. Just being really, it's going to be totally redone. Okay. So I really think. Where should we send I don't people? Mind phone call if it's for, if it's a serious phone call. Yeah. Um, I don't mind giving a face. I mean, if someone's, yeah. uh, and I I will connect. Yeah. If I don't feel, then I will not. Yeah. Connect back. So if you if you what call about me, email instead? I don't want pe random yeah, people calling you. But actually. This shows you how old I am. Yeah. As much as I use email, my mind doesn't go yeah. email. Phone is great. Yeah, it's, I mean, a, it's a lost art of calling someone. Side things about the consulting thing yeah. is how rapidly things have changed. I mean, my gosh, and the things I've had to learn. You know, just to stay current. Just the different marketing opportunities uh, are amazing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that being said. Ken underscore Glickman at this point, msn.com. That's why I'm better than the phone. Ken underscore Glickman at msn.com. Yeah. Send the email. Give me a little information about. Only if it's serious, obviously. I, I mean, if, if you want to find out more information, they can go to your site. There's videos, there's other things on there that. I don't mind. That doesn't yeah. mean you have to be spending money. Yeah. But in, you know. You're very generous, yeah. So, Ken, my last question. Yes. You know, we, we've talked about big lessons from Marty. We've talked about big lessons from Joe Polish. Um, and I guess one of the great men in my life was a gentleman named uh, Kaicho Dadashi Nakamura, uh, who is a brilliant guy and just an amazing human being. Hmm. And I learned tremendous, tremendous amount from him. I'll look uh, that up. And yeah. the big lessons from Marion Adler uh, as yeah. well. And I, I think there's always behind that. What's up now? She's been retired. Like she did so well. I think she retired at fifty. Well, and I mean, we we'll have to get her on here. Um, yeah, and great person to talk to. You know, behind yeah. the successful man, there's a more successful woman. So, and powerful woman. So, I want to know the biggest lessons you learned from your wife, actually, because I know you're a big family man. Well, you know, my wife is an amazing human being. Brilliant. Um, she, she has. She was a lawyer background too, right? She's a graduate of Columbia Law School, which yeah. is the top law school in the country. Yeah. A Harlan Stone scholar. Um, she was a partner in law firm in New York. And she then uh, she retired for a little while to be with my daughter. And then she didn't want to practice law after that because it was too consuming. She went and did great work in legal recruiting. And she's now a dean at Hofstra Law School. Hmm. And uh, just a wonderful person. Yeah. I, I think one of the great things, you know, sometimes um, over, have known each other 32 years, I think. You know, over that time, sometimes you get disappointed and you, you know. She always never, ever wavered in her total commitment to the relationship. Mm -hmm. We could be having a really bad time. That's why I tell some people that, that are having trouble. They're not sure if they should get married. In, particularly guys. Guys reach a certain age. They could just have a hard time making a commitment when mm -hmm. they should. I say, you know something? Things change when you get married. You take away that option. Right. Because sometimes when you go, oh, they did this. I don't know if I could live with this for life. And they say, you know, you know this is a good, the right purpose. You know, I say, it just takes that off the table. Right. You know what? You got a little problem there. You got to work it out. Mm -hmm. You got to work it out. I mean, it's yeah. not. You know, it, it, it. You found someone really good. You found someone really good. Now make the commitment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's got to be a really strong commitment. Mm -hmm. You can't go to some of these options that people go to too yeah. easy. Yeah. 
And I'm not saying people in an abusive relationship so they ought to get out. Right, right. But, Doesn't, you know, not all circumstances, but yes. So you've learned unwavering commitment from her. What un, else? Yeah, yeah. A, unwavering commitment. I think another thing that Daphne's really good at is doing something right away. Mm. Don't, I mean, the little things. You know? Yeah. You got to send in that form. You got to do this with your taxes. Yes. Do it right now. Yeah, I laugh because I'm horrible at that. <laughs> yes. She gets me. She says, uh, she gives me, says, okay, I'll take care of that. She keeps no. in check. Yeah. I said, I don't do that. She said, do it now. She right. always gets things done right away. She saves herself so much trouble. And, boy, people depend on her. Yeah. I mean, she says no, she says no, but, it, boy, she says she's going to do something. Boy, you, it's like having money in the bank. She just does it. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's something else. Uh, I'll tell you one other thing. And this may seem a little strange to people. Daphne was a big dog person. Mm-hmm. I had a dog for a long time. I, I, but to me, a dog was a dog. And I got involved. She had her Barney, beautiful dog, when we met that came and lived with us. And I had fun with Barney, but I never, I never really understood. And a big lesson, well, you know, a dog, you want to do something, they're not doing it. And the big thing about a dog is all they want to do is please you. All they want, it's communication. It's all in the communication. And that was a big lesson for me, for people too. It's the communication, it's how you communicate. That was a simpler form, but all, you, you got someone there, this wonderful soul, and all they want to do is please you. Yeah. And you're having trouble with it. Why? It's you. It's not them, it's you. What are you going to do to make it better? I mean, that gets back on the same thing. What's wrong with it? It's their fault, and their fault, and their fault. Even if it is their fault. You know, I tell people, if, if, if you're... In a situation, you got a tyrant of a boss, you're really making you miserable, and for some reason you can't leave right now because you till you get something because you have to. Find, okay, what do you do to make it better? What are you going to do so it doesn't bother you so much? Right. I mean, it doesn't mean it's fair. Right. Life could be unfair, but it's still. What are you going to do about it? What are you going? That's where you. That's where you have the ultimate power. The ultimate power. Yeah. And if you get to, I'm not going to remember the name again. It's great. <laughs> That's so terrible. There's a really famous book that I read when I was like 20. I've read about four times in between. But that concept, the ultimate power you have in your life is how you choose to react to something. Yeah. Nobody can take that away from you. And this was a gentleman who was in the concentration camps. And mm. I know so, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's one of my favorite books also. Now I can't remember the name of it. It's... um. He's going, what's wrong with you guys? Um, yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. And he's a psychologist, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Um, that, that was a big... It's like as soon as we want it recalled, like it doesn't come. But um, well, I... If it's tra- late and you miss the train and I say, why are you upset? I'm upset because I missed the train. Well, you're upset because you chose... You know, there's there's a cho- there's a stimulus response, but right in between is the choice. That's the moment, and that's about the attitude you adopt in life. And you know, in business, you're going to have disappointments. I mean, you are going to have disappointments. Things aren't going. You have disappointments in people that could actually waylay you. It could make you miserable, even if you're successful. Yeah. So you're it's at- Victor Frankel, man, search for meeting. Victor Frankel, but- man, search for meeting. Yeah. And now I just have to remember that other gentleman's yeah. name. Well, <laughs> Ryan Brian would throw a grapefruit at me or something. I'm gonna send this to him. I, He's good. Yeah. With all the good. But best. you know, Ken, I really appreciate it. This has been fantastic. Everyone should check out KenGlickman.com. You have some great videos on YouTube, and you know, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I've done a lot of interviews. I think this is maybe the best. You're, well, you're really. Got me going, made me feel comfortable. You showed enthusiasm. You're really great. I appreciate you. Thank you, Ken. I really appreciate you doing back. Be well, sir. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.